Hello guys, welcome to Crash Landing Tips and Tutorials. I'm almost touching the skies. I'm on my hang glider, gliding my way around my base. I've been requested by my friend, uh, I think, to give a tour around my base. Yeah, it's just a big circle and there's stuff inside. And it's actually far enough so monsters don't get aggroed on me. Yeah, let's go back down. And this is a hardcore modded map in which there's a water system right at the bottom uh, as you can see there it's right there at the options thing you have a water level and there's hamburgers whenever you eat something there's like a certain there's like a certain amount of times where you can eat before the nutritional values uh, go down so as you can see this hamburger is a pretty good item you have the four you have the three and a half chicken nuggets and you have three more the invisible one as you can see there here is like a saturation bar and yeah that is how it's going to work and what I have here is a composting setup it, it only has three barrels so it's not really that efficient I'm using rotten flesh for my mob spawner so it will be it's a very good source of uh, composting to get that this is all my miscellaneous shit chest uh, it's basically all the techno techno te technological stuff that I've got from quest and yes as you can see it works by pulling out rotten flesh and putting it into the oak barrel it, qu it requires like around 10 rotten flesh to gra to get one dead and it gets pulled out by these uh, item ducts into the chest and that's all so let's move on to my water setup uh yeah i have got a chest with oak leaves inside and i've got a hopper going into a crucible four pieces of leaves get you one bucket of water so this is really efficient to use leaves and below there, I've got pyrothium. As you can see, when I mouse over this crucible, it says speed, which is 0.5 millibuckets per tick. And I believe that is the fastest speed it can go. Pyrothium is the most efficient one. And yes, I'm pulling out the water from the crucibles into my portable tanks. Yeah, oh, what was that explosion? Nah, I bet it's just those creepers from Primitive Craft. When they die, they explode. They drop creeper plant seeds. Yeah, and I've got a cow over here. Initially, I have two, but when I left for the city, uh, one of them despawned, so I actually put a name tag on there so it won't despawn. It's just a setup to complete some of the mob essence quests. I've got two mob essence drum here, which is pretty full, and I've got this grinder just grinding on uh, mobs. This isn't a really efficient setup, I got it way too high, and some monsters just drop down and die, as you can see there, and all the remaining ones actually get taken out by the grinder. And the grinder puts it into the reactant dynamos, put, puts the mob essence into the reactant dynamos. And I have gunpowder. This actually is the best RF producer, to be honest. You have mob essence and you have gunpowder, which is pretty high up there. And I've got a redstone energy cell, putting energy into the grinder. And the chest, yeah, it's just getting items out of the grinder. And then I have an item duct going underneath and into this barrels. And I have a dense pipe which uh, pretty much get ri gets rid of all those unwanted stuff. Actually, it isn't supposed to be here, but whatever. Uh, because most of the mobs die because of fall damage, I have a vacuum hopper just taking those items and then passing it through the pipes. And as you can see, I'm sweating. If you can see some uh, water particles on me, yeah, you can see that I'm actually sweating. Yeah, but whatever. So let's move on. Uh, let's move on to my really shit enchantment setup it's just nothing much here it's, I don't even know if I'm gonna use this at all other than just the enchantment table because the auto enchanter requires mob essence and energy to run so I'm not gonna be using that anytime soon and moving on we have a pressure chamber I believe I've shown some of these things off in my update video but uh, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in, into in this episode so here I have a pressure chamber and it's the pressure is created by the kinetic compressor which is one of the best if not the best pressure generating items out there. You have the air compressor which uses coal and that is actually just not efficient at all. You have I have a hardened energy cell just passing uh, RF into this thing. You do require a thermal expansion energy conduit because this thing actually uh, accepts MJs. So you need this to convert RF to MJs, and yeah, it produces uh, it produces pressure which goes into this tube, 
And here I have a pressure gauge tube which emits redstone signal depending on the pressure inside the system. Here I have four pressure so it actually emits eight redstone si eight redstone signal strength, I think, yeah. So this redstone actually runs into my energy cell, the block underneath the energy cell. Oh, this thing is weird. You can actually see through it. It's like an x-ray block. That's cool. But I take note of that soon. Uh, so once it, once it uh, drops below four, the redstone signal actually turns itself off. So when it turns itself off, this thing will start running again. And this is pretty much my safety setup for the time being. And I think it's going to stay there forever. So I have a assembly system over here. Let me show you guys how it works. Oh, the sun's setting, whatever. Uh, so what you want to do is, uh, this thing actually works for PCVs, advanced pipes and stuff. But what you want to do is throw in some compressed iron and seats and you have to put the filter on. So pressure chamber interface, uh, it's for the empty PCBs. You just need compressed iron and the creeper plant seats plastic. Once you've got those inside, it will cook itself up. Uh, yeah, and it's done because it's at full pressure and it's pretty high. So let's just pull the empty PCBs out. This pressure in chamber interface are really, really efficient. So I've got a thing. I've got a chest on top, just pushing items into the pressure chamber interface. You have to place. You have to place them in some weird orientation in order to set their inputs and outputs. So, yeah. Okay, so now you've got the empty PCBs. You take them out and you put this inside this chest. Uh. As you can see, you need two I/O units at the top, at the top half of the square, and you need assembly laser here, an assembly platform, and the assembly controller here, in which you have to run pressure into. And yeah, you can see them working. It's quite cool to see them. You see the laser; it's like going. And it's always good to put some speed upgrades in here, and the programmer, which will, which will award you with, uh, which they will award you with after doing some quest. And there you have it. You have the unassembled PCBs and yeah this thing is basically pretty much automated you just need to throw in the PCBs yeah so next up is my high oven controller it is running at full speed okay so I just ran out of charcoal but what you can do is actually grab some of the tin ore dust and some charcoal oh well, my mouse is getting kind of weird I don't know every time I play these kinds of games my mouse just get really wonky so whoa 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 Get a, get a hold of yourself mouse so all you need is charcoal you can't use coal because those are quote unquote unrefined uh, fuel so it is actually I have an item duct pushing things inside and yeah it's cooking up those silver dust and once it cooks up it actually triples your ore output so you get three uh, three ingots per dust and it's getting pulled out by the fluid duct into my casting table and yeah it's working fine it's working pretty awesome and here I have a smeltery nothing to, nothing much to see here to be honest and I have a crucible lava generated lava generation setup yeah it is really simple just a hopper into lava I have lava below so the speed is actually 0 0.2 it's a bit worse than pyrothium but okay uh, I've got to change my camel packs now here's a here's finally some tips do carry multiple camel packs on you because it is a really efficient way rather than to just carry water bottles around. So yeah, to be honest, I don't really have a way to automate camel packs and I have no reason to do it now. Yeah, so here I have is a sifting setup. Uh, I have hammers in this autonomous activator. I have, uh, I previously have crafted a ton of uh, extra stone hammers in here and they are automatically putting into these autonomous activators this is just a vanilla cobble gen yeah and it's nothing much so I have these omnidirectional hoppers that actually is able to pick up those cobblestone uh, those gravel yeah because when you use a stone hammer on cobblestone you can actually get gravel, gravel and yeah, it goes into this power riser and gets pulverized into sand and dust which I could throw inside this autonomous activator and it will start sifting those guys. I have a vacuum hopper here and it is going to this chest and this chest, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to power this auto packager and once the auto packager gets power, it packages those ores, those crushed nickel ores, these things into dust. Yeah, I don't really need dust right now you could see I'm doing pretty well on resources and diamonds and redstone 
tons of certain squats. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm a bit tired, but uh, yeah, let's go. Let's move on. Okay, so I have a mycelium set up here for witch water and making soul sand and other stuff. And I have a stone barrel here. You know why? Because when you put lava into it, and then when you put redstone into this barrel, you actually get netherrack. And when you have lava inside, and then you right click it with glowstone, you actually get endstone. So this is pretty useful. And this is just a previous setup for bananas and apples. This is my tree setup. Uh, why is it not running? It has power, and then it's idling. Does it not have any place to put stuff? Yeah, I don't really have a overflow chest for this one. Uh, let me just quickly grab some chests out of my boxes, <laughs> of my hard and strong boxes. I think this will just work out just fine. Do I have some item ducts on me? Yeah, because I do have a knapsack, because it is a really efficient way to store stuff. Uh, let me just put this right here. Oh no, let me just put this. I don't know where to put this, to be honest. Uh, maybe here. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, it should be working now, to be honest. Uh, I do have extra space inside. Is it not working? It's getting stuff with oak leaves. Oh, yeah, because I have a ton of leaves. To be honest, I've been manually switching in and out of the sheer leaves mode in order to keep up with my water supply. But as you can see, I'm pretty good on water. And yeah, there's nothing much to do. It's just my ordinary tree farm setup. You can find it in Agrarian Skies or something. Yeah, in my Agrarian Skies series, please check that out if you got time. It's not finished yet. I've actually recorded myself to the ending, almost to the ending. I'm missing just a couple bragging rights crests, but uh, it's nothing much. So, for my farm setup, mostly consists of potatoes and soya beans. Those are the best food sources out there because, as you can see, uh, once you get once you get your po first potato from the mob spawner that you're going to set up uh, You are going to be rolling in food as you can see while I harvest those potatoes. I Do almost have a stack of potatoes just by doing that. It is really really good and soybeans is Super awesome. You can you can put soybeans inside and then you do get a uh, I think you do get the soya milk which is good for making cheese and you got silken tofu. Silken tofu you can actually throw inside the presser again to get firm tofu. This thing replaces all types of meat which brings me to the point. The best food source for uh, crash landing would be burgers. Uh, as you can see you, need, you just need toast, firm tofu and you can just add cheese or you can add mushroom to get bacon mushroom burger. No you can add cheese first to a hamburger to get cheeseburger and then you can add another piece of firm tofu to get yourself bacon cheeseburger then you can add yourself onto uh, then you can add yourself some mushrooms to get the bacon mushroom burger which recovers a ton of food uh food thing oh by the way yeah because this mod there there's a mod that controls how much food uh, the nutritional values of food so you can't just eat a single type of food every single time because it will reach the point where there is literally no nutritional value in eating toast so you got to change it up a little bit and the best way to change it up is to have four different types of hamburgers so you can just interchange between them and they are pretty efficient yeah and I've got this farm set up here I've got a bunch of crafting stations as crafting flour dough and pie yeah okay whoa the mouse is getting kind of weird I've got a rubber tree farm here and I've got a pumetic craft farm yeah here's here's the end stone that I'm talking about and here's the nether rack and over here I've got I've actually got a quarry for dust and I've got a nether portal down there I've visited the nether there's nothing in there so don't even bother so back to my ship my ship, uh, yeah, it's supposed to take off sometime soon. Uh, because one, I mean, I was working on this this map for quite a long time, and then I realized there's only seventy, th there's only sixty seven quests in total for crash landing, and I've completed fifty eight. So I'm pretty much almost done, to be honest. So I didn't expect this map to end so fast because agrarian guys took way longer than this. 
And yeah, I've got my sync set up. I've got different. I've got like four lives. Yeah, it's for it's like backup and stuff. Yeah, I've got some machines here: basic machines, glacial precipitator, induction smelter. Yeah, all the kind of stuff. I do almost have a ME system set up. I've got two disk drives in there, but I didn't bother with it because this map is so short. And yeah, I think I'm done with my tips and tricks video. Hope you guys have learned something from this map, from my experience at least. And do enjoy the map. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.